From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday night. I'm Russ Riesinger. Honor and respect on this Veterans Day. Local veterans groups gathering for a ceremony in Billings to honor all veterans of America's armed forces. A ceremony that is usually filled with large groups and pomp and circumstance was foregone for a much smaller event. Q2's Mitch Leggy takes us there. In Billings, members of America's Armed Forces were honored with a ceremony at Veterans Park on Wednesday. The ceremony was scaled back from its usual size to accommodate for COVID-19. But those in attendance still made sure that the veterans were recognized for their service. On a normal Veterans Day, local veterans groups would gather at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel. This year, the ceremony was broken up into two smaller events, with one in Billings and one in Laurel. Remarks were given by Billings Mayor Bill Cole, Governor-elect Greg Gianforte, and representatives from both Senators Steve Daines and John Tester's offices. Chaplain of the Billings Chapter of Disabled American Veterans, Sue Davidson, gave the opening prayer, asking for unity across the country. We cannot let our disagreements tear apart our great country, which so many have shed their blood for, our wonderful freedoms we've been fighting for. We are still the United States of America and one nation under you, O oh God. United we stand and divided we fall. We cannot fail and we cannot fall. Members of the Eugene Serra Detachment of the Marine Corps League presented the flag, while Marissa Underwood, Miss Montana 2020, recited the Pledge of Allegiance. The VFW Post 6774 shot their guns in a salute, while a bugler played taps on his horn. Vietnam vet Dave Rye placed a wreath on the monument in the park, a symbol thanking veterans and their families for their service and sacrifice. And Veterans Day is a great opportunity to return the favor and say to our veterans, we know that you have our back and it's our turn to say to you that we have your back. All of us have veterans in our lives. You're our friends, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our co-workers. And uh, because of your sacrifice, uh, we enjoy the freedoms that we have in this country. Uh, we can never uh, fully repay uh, the debt that we owe you, uh, but we can say thank you, and that's what we do here on Veterans Day. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Thanks, Mitch. The group stopped at the Yellowstone National Cemetery in Laurel this afternoon as well. And in case you're wondering, Veterans Day originally marked the first anniversary of the end of World War I. A local nonprofit helped feed more than 100 service members and their families this Veterans Day. The Veterans Meat Locker gave out free meat to veterans who stopped by American Legion Post number four today. Vets were also treated to breakfast donated by the American Legion and prepared by Phillips 66 refinery staff. The Meat Locker operates with the help of donated domestic and game meat from area ranchers and hunters. This year, the Meat Locker is stepping up its services for the holiday season. The group is currently seeking holiday food staples to distribute on Thanksgiving and Christmas. I have a meat giveaway or a meat handout with these boxes. It'll be on um, November 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. It'll be a drive up style that everybody lets us know beforehand their families and their names and they can drive up here after work and will run out a box with their name on it and they sign and they go. So it'll be a quick easy way and they'll have a Thanksgiving dinner in a box ready for them by Thursday. And to make a donation the Montana or to the Montana Veterans Meat Locker, you can find a Facebook page in the story on KTVQ.com. Well, accidents coming from every direction, crashes and slide offs all throughout Billings this evening. Take a look here. This is Highway 3. A car hit a guardrail, went down a short embankment. Luckily, everyone inside that vehicle appeared to be OK. There were also reports of accidents on both sides of I-90, uh, eastbound and, and westbound, also on I-94 likely slowing down traffic as crews responded. And those icy roads causing uh, miles-long traffic jams in Billings, especially wow. in 4th Avenue, 
which uh, leading out to the heights here, boy, it was it was something. I haven't seen it like that before. I, it's, I've seen it one other time, and it's, it's just nasty. It takes a long time to go anywhere. Let there take a look at it. You can see that's the way it looked. Uh, we got to put a graphic together here to show you exactly what happened here. Uh, obviously, that's the way it looked. If you were waiting for somebody to come home from downtown Billings tonight, they were a little delayed because here's what happened. It started off with some flurries it's about 1 o'clock this afternoon, and that stuff melted on the streets right away. But then the cold air continued to fall. It was a one-two punch. Snow moved in. The cold air moved in right behind it. And then all of a sudden the car started compacting the ice because this all happened right around five o'clock in the evening and just as people were going home on the evening drive they started buffing up the ice which made it very slick almost as if there was some sort of a uh, zamboni driving down the streets made it very very slick the good news is no, now the snow has stopped and it continues to move out of the area and then tomorrow look at that that's a warm front moving in and that's going to start melting this ice and we're going to start warming back up to the other side of freezing we'll have more on that in a few minutes Thank you, Bob. COVID-19 related deaths across Montana have reached nearly 500 now. This is County Health Authorities announced another seven victims today. Those individuals, two in Roosevelt County, one each in Yellowstone, Custer, Deer Lodge, Granite and Weibo counties. MTN News now reports this brings the statewide total deaths from COVID-19 related illness to 497. Well, despite the rate of infections, the Yellowstone County Health Officer will not enact any new restrictions this week but he's not ruling out more in the future. Yellowstone County Health Officer John Felton hinted on Monday that new orders may be on the way, but said in, a, said in a news release this afternoon that while the situation is still very serious, officials will wait on one more week of data. The number of patients hospitalized in Yellowstone County remains at the highest level since the beginning of the pandemic. The first 10 days of November, an average of 124 people a day. And the state reports 500 people are in hospitals across Montana, but there is some help on the way. A spokesperson for Senator Steve Dane says Montana will get more than 700 vials of the newly approved Eli Lilly antibody drug this week. Well, on this Veterans Day, a Helena woman is sharing her story and one way she's getting help to overcome some dark wartime memories. MTN's Alexia Guayo introduces us to Amber and Arbor. Good boy, speak! <laughs> <laughs> Arbor is a playful, loving dog, according to the owner, Amber. But another special thing about Arbor is that he is a service dog trained for veterans with post-traumatic stress, among other things. Amber enlisted into the Army in the mid-80s and knew from the start it was going to be a long journey. Right from the get-go in basic training, I learned very quickly that I was a female. And I went through hell being a female. She suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder after her military sexual trauma. For about 30 years, the invisible wound kept Amber depressed, away from living a social life. Then Arbor came around to help her overcome that. I never saw myself as my wound being worthy. And I, I, having Arbor was like a, a badge of honor for me. It was like coming home that I could just embrace that I had served too. Arbor comes from the Canine Companions for Independence, a nonprofit that provides service dogs for those in need like veterans with PTSD. December will mark one year that Amber and Arbor have been together. Within the one year, Amber says she's gained more independence, freedom, and a social life. And I find myself out for an hour, maybe two hours, exploring things, looking around. It is incredibly healthy for me because I could stay in this house for three, five days and never leave and never have a problem with it. I can't do that with Arbor. It's medicine. He has to get out and I love him. Look how he is. <laughs> there are 16 Montanans with service dogs under this organization. Amber is the only one that is a military veteran. In Helena, I'm Alexi Guayo, MTN News. And Amber hopes that her story encourages others to take action and seek necessary help. Health and uh, health care are some of the biggest issues facing veteran populations. Montana VA says telehealth has been a game changer for them and their patients. You know, some veterans in Montana have to travel more than 100 miles to get to the nearest VA clinic. Telehealth means they can connect with a doctor at their home or wherever they have cell service. Doctors are even able to walk someone through getting their blood pressure checked or a dermatology consultation. VA staff says it's been a huge benefit for behavioral health patients. 
parents juggling child care and older veterans who need to stay informed about their care. We do a video connect appointment. It's like a, almost like a doing a three-way phone call or a four-way phone call. So we have a veteran that comes into the clinic. His son lives in Seattle. His son was actually able to be in his appointment and the provider, the patient, and the son are all in different locations. Telemedicine implementation in Montana is still facing significant challenges with rural internet and cell service infrastructure lacking for many Montana communities, which certainly can limit access. Well, tonight a Great Falls resident made his television debut. Michael Chasteen and his wife moved to Great Falls two years ago to raise a family. And tonight Chasteen made his first appearance as an undercover cop on NBC's Chicago PD. Chasteen says the experience has been incredible. He says, well, the show provides a glimpse into some of the issues that play out in people's daily lives. It also gives hope. It's been an incredible experience because you get to feel the realness of, you know, what's actually going on in the world. But what's so cool about this show is that it is targeting um, social injustice. It is going to be about what's going on in the world today, you know, racial equality, everything. Um, so I think it's going to be a huge hit. Um, I think it's going to speak to a lot of people. Well, tonight represented season eight of Chicago PD. Still ahead on the MTN 9 o'clock news as Montana businesses continue to navigate their way through the COVID-19 pandemic. There may be some financial relief on the way, we'll explain. But first, Bob will slide back in with your full seven-day forecast.